Zoo Tycoon 2, a game full of fun and magic and wonder, and also a game that I am terrible at. I have tried literally like two times now to make a zoo that I could be proud of, but it only ever ends in chaos and misery and a lot of legal trouble actually. I should probably be in prison right now. It's got me thinking, maybe I just don't understand animals. I mean, what goes on inside of a meerkat's head? It's probably just cat dancing to hamster dance 10 hours version or something. Perhaps then, my zoo would be better off if it was run by an animal. Introducing my cat and our new zoo manager, Sooty. You might not know it from looking at her adorable little face, but Sooty is a genius. And with her help, I believe we can finally achieve the elusive five golden stars. So, without further ado, it was time to jump into the game. Ah, what a beautiful open grassy pasture we have here to turn into Sooty's glorious empire. The first thing to do was set up a park entrance, and I wanted to choose the softest paving material possible, as Sooty is very particular about these things, and I know that she will be going around the entire park stomping on every path to make sure it's soft enough. Unfortunately, the softest paving material in this game is dirt, so everyone who visits this zoo is going to be leaving the premises absolutely filthy. But this works in our favour as well, because we can charge people extra to be hosed down on the way out. You see, Sooty thinks about these things, she's a very shrewd businesswoman. It was about time then we gave Sooty an office. Yes, the Chief Warden would have her very own premium enclosure, right in the centre of the park. Of course, in real life, Sooty is very, very shy. She's only comfortable around me and like six other people in the whole world, which isn't massively useful when hoping to draw huge crowds of people to our zoo, so to make sure she doesn't have to interact with any scary visitors, I just built this huge natural wall, just surrounded her in a giant mountain range. And now that was dealt with, Sooty could get to work. We had some big decisions to make, and I began by asking her all the important questions. Hi Sooty, I was just wondering, what's your favourite animal? Ah, this could be a problem. I forgot that Sooty doesn't speak English. Hmm, it seemed I would have to change tactic. You see, Sooty is someone who leads by example, and so, by studying the way she lives her life, I should be able to infer just how she wants this zoo to be run. When thinking about which animal to pick then, a few things came to mind. The first is that Sooty loves watching birds. She is very much the David Attenborough of the cat world, and if she likes watching birds, then perhaps the general public would as well. So I set about building an enclosure full of common peafowl, or as we call them in the UK, a peacock. And yeah, do you know what? I can see why Sooty enjoys doing this. There's something about birds which is just so majestic. And that's why we need more of them. Much, much more of them. What, you think a few common peafowl is enough to satiate Sooty's needs? No, she needs to watch all of the birds. Sooty deserves every single bird in the world. Do not underestimate her again. Yeah, there we go, that's perfect. This is going to make our zoo really popular. It's like a battery farm, but with less guilt attached because we can use the word conservation. Sooty was over the moon with this first exhibit, and being the cutthroat businesswoman that she is, she decided to monetize the whole situation through a donation box based system. It's quite simple really, you look at the common peafowls, you have so much fun, and then you head straight next door to the ATM to withdraw all your savings and donate them to the zoo. With birds ticked off the list, it was time to tackle Sooty's second favorite category of animal, fish. Sooty likes fish for a very different reason to birds, because fish get compacted into gelatine and put inside of her food bowl every dinner time. That's right, we were going to make an exhibit that was not only interesting for visitors to look at, but also doubled as a fish farm for Sooty's cat food supply. The only issue was, the selection of animals I had to choose from weren't exactly typical cat food flavours. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Felix variety pack doesn't include flavours such as narwhal, or manta ray, or scallop hammerhead. In fact, the only normal fish I could find in the game, the arctic cod, was marked down in the toy section under the swordfish tab. Oh well, it'll do, and I began to spam down as many arctic cod as possible, and then I kept going, and kept going, until 
Oh my god. Look at how many fish there are. Sooty is going to be so happy. I need to take a picture of this for her. She will love this. Unfortunately, having quite so many arctic cod was making the game lag horribly. So we did have to turn them into cat food straight away. And now all that's left of the exhibit is just this massive hole in the ground. While all this was going on, I was starting to notice a few other potential issues cropping up. It seems that we were getting quite a lot of complaint notifications. So I wonder how the people files are doing. Oh god. Uh oh. Why are there carcasses in the exhibit? That's not a good sign. Wait, no. We've got a breach. The peafowl are escaping. They've broken the fence. Oh god. It's like chicken run, but more exotic. This is bad news. I have to go and inform Sooty about this. Sorry. Excuse me, Sooty. We have an emergency right- You've got to be kidding me. She's fallen asleep. She's sleeping on the job. In a state of panic, I tried desperately to fence the peafowl in, so the enclosure ended up being quite a lot bigger than initially anticipated. Even so though, some peafowl had escaped a bit too far, they were sort of trying to breach the river, and so I had to put some up for adoption on short notice. Or, as was the case with peafowl number 4, I decided to relocate her in with Sooty, which was a bit risky on my part because cats and birds don't typically mix well together, but Sooty is actually really affable and really welcoming, and they became best friends in no time. Okay, so maybe the whole peacock situation was a bit of a failure on my part. Let's not put any blame on our chief warden, of course, even though she was taking a nap in business hours. Also, what the hell have the zookeepers been doing this whole time? I mean, just look at the sheer amount of bird poo. I don't have all day to just clean up bird poo with my infinite number of magic broomsticks I seem to somehow have. Oh yeah, great, just spray the peacocks with a water pistol, that'll work. With all this mess around, you might be wondering why I haven't employed any maintenance workers yet. And that's because Sooty is terrified of maintenance workers. She hates the plumber, she hates the electrician, she hates builders. It's one of her two biggest fears. The other one being balloons. She's really scared of balloons for some reason. So what we'll do is we'll just fence all of the maintenance workers in here, just to be safe. Oh, for God's sake, now the general public has started to panic because they think I'm building a prison. Look guys, it's not what it seems and oh no, some of them have fallen into the hole where the cod exhibit used to be. Well, it's every man for himself now. I'm just going to let that royal rumble play out. It was probably best at this point if I just scrapped everything I'd done so far and started again. So I called up the adoption agency and they sent over some helicopters to begin airlifting the peafowls out one by one. Although maybe they shouldn't have sent the helicopters all at once because that does not seem safe. Guys, are you sure you know how to fly these things? As a side note, I have no idea who in their right mind would want to adopt 192 common peafowl. But as a result, my zoo did end up with an award for conservation. Okay, how about for now then, instead of focusing on the animal side of things, we just start by putting in some conveniences. Let's make a little food court. I started our food court by putting down a sushi restaurant, which will of course be exclusively selling the cod flavoured cat food we farmed earlier. This was met with a couple of complaints, such as this one from Jim Wu, who says, I think Felix Variety Pack cod flavour is overpriced. Right, well take that up with the cat food industry, not me. But don't worry Jim Wu, because the other food we will be selling is Sooty's absolute favourite. I don't know if she's secretly French or something, but Sooty loves croissants. She can't get enough of them. Every time I'm trying to enjoy a fresh croissant in the morning, she's sitting there with a sad little expression on her face like, Qu'est-ce que c'est le croissant? And I have to tell her, look, I don't speak French, we've been over this. Anyway, with all these new croissant stands, I finally felt like our zoo was making some real progress progress, and my mind was just whirring with ideas I could pitch to Sooty next. Wait, what is that? I didn't place this weird crystal cave down. Uh, what is all this? Why is there an actual functioning zoo in the top left of my park? Oh no, 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 no. This was the worst possible news. String World had moved into the area. String was Sooty's arch nemesis. She was always chasing after him, always catching him, and yet, in the end, String always got away. And now, here he was, back again to foil her plans by setting up a zoo just across the park. What's more, String World was kind of impressive. They had pandas, penguins, wild dogs, and pris... Pr Pres Preswalski? Preswalski? They had wild horses as well. Compared to that, what me and Sooty had come up with so far, and, well, we stood no chance. Was that it then? Were we doomed to fail from the very start? But no, Sooty never gives up, especially not when String is involved. 
Most importantly, Sooty is a goddamn money-making genius, and if she knows how to build a business, she also knows how to take one down. She began by placing all of the toilets for our zoo at the entrance of Stringworld, so anyone thinking of going to our competitor would be swamped by disgusting smells. Then, she erased all the stupid mistakes I had made, and began to enact the most incredible strategy you've ever seen in Zoo Tycoon history. Constructing a sky rail, Sooty physically raised all of the ground around her. Then, she built enclosure after enclosure high high up in the air, and filled them with all sorts of amazing animals. Giraffes, beavers, gorillas, kangaroos, hippos, whatever the hell these things are, I don't know. And to top it all off, a couple of stegosauruses. That's right, she literally brought a species back from extinction, she's that smart. And the most genius part? If you're a filthy ground dweller who visits String World, you won't be able to see any of this, unless you pay the extortionate fees for Sooty's Premium Skyrail Experience. Come on down to Sooty's Premium Skyrail Experience, and see wild animals from a perspective and distance that makes them seem small and underwhelming. Feel the wind in your hair, and eyes, and face, as you attempt to squint down and see a bunch of beavers that aren't being taken care of because the zookeepers can't make it up to them. Oh, that's quite a good point actually, I'm not sure we've really thought this one through. Oh well, at least we can spam telegraph poles all over Stringworld to make sure they never get a moment's peace. And altogether this was the kick that Sooty's zoo really needed. The money started raking in, the star ratings began to climb, and the zoo went from strength to strength. One of our gorillas painted a piece of artwork that eventually got used in the Tate Modern. And I can see why, mamma mia, that is, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. We opened up a new manatee exhibit so Sooty and Peafowl number four could watch them together and laugh for hours and hours at their ugly and strange appearance. After the success of our Sky Rail, Sooty's premium Jeep tour experience was opened, which of course also ran straight through the middle of Stringworld, disrupting all of their animals and running over copious amounts of unfortunate Stringworld customers in the process. And, in the best news of all, our Stegosaurus couple gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Oh, and look at that. One of Stringworld's Przewalski wild horses has given birth as well. Wait, what did that message say? Przewalski wild horse has given birth. A balloon bouquet has been delivered to your zoo gate? Oh no, we've been sabotaged! Stringworld knew that Sooty is scared of balloons, and they've ordered in a whole bunch of them. And wait, no, what's that rumbling? Oh god, here come the balloon mascots, and the maintenance workers have been set loose as well. Oh, the horror. This is it then. Run, Sooty. Run!